Okay, hello everyone. Today I'm going to apologize in advance for this video. You know what? I think I've got an idea. Okay, bear with me in this video. Um, I was going to say that because I'm making the stir fry that I'm making in this pot, you can't see my video. But hold on, let me try to transfer it into my skillet, so bear with me. This is going to be a real-time cooking video today. Okay, I'm going to take this big skillet and I'm going to transfer what's in my deep pot into this skillet. So bear with me, please, and stay tuned. Okay, I think you can see that now. Try to adjust the camera. Okay, now what I'm doing, okay, bear with me one more second. Let me get a couple of more ingredients. Okay, here we go. All right. This is a great way. Um, just say like if on Memorial Day, you had a lot of um, dishes left over, you know, because we can tend to barbecue and have vegetable trays and everything. Well, let me show y'all something. I had a veggie tray right here. This veggie tray came with broccoli, uh, carrots, uh, da, 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 tomatoes and a ranch dip so I had broccoli left over and I had the carrots left over so what I did was I bought one package of medium already cooked peeled and devein tail on shrimp from my local store which was Aldi see pretty good sized shrimp too and what I've done was taken the broccoli from the vegetable tray, the carrots, put that one bag, which was frozen, of the shrimp. Got that going in my pan. Got my pan on high. I added a little bit of oil already. Now, in the meantime, I also had left over some roasted peppers that went with our barbecued meat. So I'm going to add these peppers for spice. They were just simple roasted peppers that everybody likes to pick up and eat. So why not? They've got to be used. We're not going to throw them away. Remember, we don't waste food around here. We take everything and make us another meal or meals out of it. Sometimes, you know, I can make stuff that I may make one pot of something and within the next two to three days, it turns into three more different dishes like I did with that meatloaf. If you haven't watched the meatloaf of my mother's recipe that I made, I think two Sundays ago. I know it was a Sunday after Mother's Day. So go check out that video. Because I took that meatloaf that uh, my mother gave me her recipe. And uh, we had meatloaf one day. Then we had the meatloaf sandwiches another day. And then we took the rest of the meatloaf and I cut it into chunks and slices like steaks. And they were like a chopped steak. Flavor was so delicious. So go check out those videos if you haven't watched them. Okay, we've got our peppers in. We got our heat has come back up. Now we've got our broccoli, our shrimp, our carrots. Now remember, this shrimp is already cooked, the, the one that I bought. 
Now, you can get the one that's uh, not cooked, but I prefer the one that's already cooked because by the time you add it to your oil and or butter, throw in your other ingredients, basically the shrimp is just heating through, so it's very quick and easy. All right, we got that going, so let's go to our next leftover. We've got some Brussels sprouts here. I'm going to cut these Brussels sprouts up. Because this Brussels sprouts is just, to me, they taste like small cabbage. That's all it is. Identical to a small cabbage. Same flavor. Almost the same texture. Maybe just a little bit sturdier unless you overcook them. But we're going to put these in here. I think I had about six of them. That's why I say you can take leftovers and make the most amazing dish. And you're going to see how this comes together here in just a minute. And it'll look like a restaurant dish when you get through it. Nobody knows you just took your leftovers from your, your holiday or your party. Now I'm going to put the juice in too because I had uh, lemon juice, butter, and garlic. So we want that juice. Almost done, guys. Two more ingredients, and we are done. That quick, simple, and easy. That's what I like. Simple and easy. Okay, let's go ahead. Make sure you keep your heat up, too, because you don't want your vegetables and stuff to boil, especially that shrimp. Because remember, all of this stuff is already done. You're not adding anything other than that broccoli and that carrot. And you know those come together very quickly. So you just want to keep that fire up. Mmm, that smells so good, y'all, already. All right. Next, we have some leftover cabbage. Now, I'm not, I had a pretty good size bowl of this leftover. I'm not going to use all of this because I'm going to save half of this and make a uh, shrimp fried rice with it. And I'm going to take half this cabbage mix, make the basmati rice, and some scrambled eggs, and done. So I'm just going to use, since we've already got our other vegetables going on in here, oh, maybe about that much. Well, maybe a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, still got a lot of that left over to make our shrimp fried rice with our eggs and stuff up in there. So let's get that incorporated. Now you're going to have some liquid in your dish, but the key is to keep your temperature up high and then stir it at all times. And then I'm going to show you something else that's going to get that liquid out of there. Oh my God, look at all the shrimp, the veggies, the cabbage. Can y'all see this? Let me see if I can pick the skillet up. Look at that. Ooh, we look at that. God, ooh, it smells so good too. Mm, mm, mm. It smells like takeout already. Okay, now, last. But not least, and we are pretty much done here. I had some pasta left over. I have another video on my pasta that I made. Very simple and easy. It is just, uh, you can use angel hair spaghetti or regular spaghetti. And it's just garlic, tomatoes, uh, lemon juice, butter. Simple. So we are going to go ahead and put all of that in here. Oh, my Lord. Mm, mm, mm. It's getting better and better by the minute. And we are about one minute out from finishing this dish. All right. Stir it up. Get it, everything incorporated. I'm going to show y'all a sauce that I use. You can use the sauce that you want to use. It is strictly up to you. I use a variety of sauces. I have um, an uh, Asian market that's down the street from me. And if I tell you 
Oh Lord, they have the best sauces, vegetables, meats. They have a lot of uh, ethnic foods there. They've got Asian sauces, African sauces, you name it. They've got so many things that I go up and down every aisle. I spend about probably three hours in there. And I just pick up all kinds of sauces and try them. One of my favorite is like banana sauce. I just try them all. Chili garlic sauce. I've got a, <laughs> a big old gallon thing of the... Um, matter of fact, let me show it to you while this is coming up. One second. This is my chili garlic sauce, y'all. <laughs> you can see it's the size of a gallon of milk, but it's the chili garlic sauce. And what I do, I buy this. It used to be, before the pandemic, it was like $9 for this big old gallon. Now it went up to like $15, but it's worth it because I take it. When I open it, I divide it into about 20 different small containers or freezer small bags put them in my freezer and I pull them out as needed delicious on anything marinating and cooking okay we have a good boil now we don't want to overcook our shrimp remember everything's already done except for that broccoli you see it still has a beautiful color and those carrots We've incorporated all our leftovers, our peppers. We put in our Brussels sprouts, our leftover uh, pasta that we made that was simple. All it was was just garlic, spaghetti noodles, lemon, and butter. Y'all look at that. Now, let me show you the final tip, and then we're done. Take your skillet that has the little thing on the top so that you can steam it so that you can get rid of the liquid that's in here oh we're forgetting our sauce y'all I'm sorry see I'm getting hungry we're gonna use the zero sugar zero sugar teriyaki sauce I personally prefer the sesame oil or sesame sauce but since I don't have that today, I'm going to use a little bit of this zero sugar teriyaki sauce to give it that authentic flavor. Now we're going to stir it up and use the skillet the, from what I'm fixing to show you. Let's see, we've got the liquid in here and we don't want that. We want everything to just be nothing but vegetable, shrimp deliciousness not a lot of water it's not a soup this is a stir fry all right so now let me show you how to get rid of the liquid you're going to keep your heat on high and you're going to take a skillet that has the little uh, top that will steam it for you and it's going to instantly start steaming that and that means it's going to draw that water out then you want to turn it down to about medium so let's give it a minute I'm going to say maybe about five minutes or less. That's going to steam off that extra lim uh, liquid. And when we open up this pot, it's just going to be delicious stir fry. So let's give it a minute and come back. Okay, now for time purposes, we're not going to wait another four minutes, so I'm going to dish up a little bit of this. And like I said, you're really going to keep that top on there. If you don't have that kind of top, just tilt your lid up real simple. I want to dip up some of this so y'all can see what this looks like. Mm. Just for you to see how beautiful it is. 
how delicious, how rewarding, simple to make, using nothing but leftover ingredients. And actually, to tell the truth, if you don't want it as a stir fry, if you want to keep your liquids and stuff on there, you can by all means do that. I mean, I want it stir fry today for our family, but if you don't want it to be a stir fry, you can definitely make it into a beautiful soup where everybody can have a piece of crusty bread with it and sop up them good old juices. Yes, whatever you want to do, it's your household. Now, this is the finished product, everyone. Look at that. I put it in a glass bowl so that you could see. Because the finished product doesn't have any of the juice on it. Because once you put that lid on it, tilt it, it's going to just steam and evaporate. You'll be left with nothing but beautiful vegetables in a dish. This is the finished product. And like I said, if you want it as a soup or something hearty where you can dip some bread or make it like a comfort food, you can most certainly do that. But this is the finished product, how it looks. Nothing but leftover food from Memorial Day that we cleaned out the refrigerator. Simple and easy. Hearty meal. Makes a whole lot of it, as you can see. Very, very, very delicious. And then you can garnish it with like some sesame seeds, something like that. And of course, some extra lemon wedges or something. But look at that. Look at that. Just a delicious, hearty bowl. And actually, it's healthy. So after you eat all of that Memorial Day food, <laughs> ribs, chicken, you name it, barbecue, all kinds of stuff, you can come back with your leftovers, your veggie trays, and stuff like that and make a beautiful, hearty meal for your family. I hope you enjoyed this today. And one last thing that you can do, too, uh, to make life easier is just trust in God. Don't give up. God is a beautiful, amazing God. He loves us. And just remember, He's looking out for us on a daily basis and we don't have to worry about anything God has gone before us so keep your trust in God and it's all gonna be okay just get up and say thank you Lord I appreciate you he got you be blessed